Well, hey guys and welcome back to my garden in progress. I've got some Titan sunflower seeds that need planting so let's go ahead and plant those. I'm thinking I'm gonna plant them obnoxiously, wonderfully, majestically in the front of my garden. How cool would it be to have like a 10 foot sunflower here at the start of the garden? I think that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> Never done it before so let's see how it turns out. So this is kind of neat. You guys remember those $2 seed starting trays I made from the dollar store trays? They were actually cake pans from the dollar store. Those things have been working great and this is the results of using my seed blocker. As you can see, there is plenty of root formation. It's looking pretty healthy. The plant itself could be doing a lot better, but that's my bad for not transplanting it soon enough. I wanted to show you guys, check out those roots. to go inside and get my jacket because while most of you guys are roasting in other parts of the country it's like chilly here in California so no real rhyme or reason to the design here I have done just about every sunflower I own at the moment in the front parts of these garden beds I've done snacker sunflowers I've done these ruby red giants from under a tin farm they participated in my seed swap the save love seed swap in February for Valentine's Day if you guys want to be a part of that join in next year it was so fun exchanging Valentine and then in between all of those oh and then I did my Titan sunflower transplants which honestly are looking pretty sickly I'll be surprised if they make it California giant zinnia from Baker Creek seeds in between so Hopefully it's like a giant neon sign. Come to my garden pollinators, I love you. <laughs> okay, let me show you what else is happening out here at the moment. So I believe these are foxglove. I might be messing up the name, uh, but I got them at that plant sale when I went with my friend Amber. They needed to be transplanted. They were very root bound. I waited too long. And so now they're just living in my dirt. Um, and honestly, they're not very happy there either. So it's time to find a better home for them. What I have been working on is that home. And let me show you what that's looking like. Here is the hole, which really doesn't look like very much on camera, but if you've ever dug a hole, I'm sure you know how much work this has been. This is only half the dirt. The other half is in the dog run, but I've excavated this whole section, dug around a root, which is really hard to do, and then I've started raking it up to make it nice and even and uh, ready to be mixed with our soil. Guys, these gloves, these gloves are everything. I'm so thankful to my neighbor who lent me these gloves. They're so great. They have saved my hands so much from all of this work. They're called Diggs gloves and I'll link them down below. Gail, this section of the vlog is dedicated to you, my sweet, sweet friend. Gail, you are awesome and you comment, I think, on every video and you just, you bring a smile to my face. Thank you so much for the heads up about the roots. I've been trying really hard to deal with some of the tree roots that we have in this garden bed so that they don't take over, like you mentioned, that they might do. But I'm going to take a page out of your book and we're going to plant some perennials around the roots and hopefully, hopefully we can make it work. 
here are some more transplants. These have been transplanted from the front garden back here. These plants, um, this lavender and this rosemary were actually here when we got here, uh, but they were taking up weird space. They were planted incorrectly in the front. And so I've transplanted them here temporarily. Uh, I would like to transplant them into this bed. Oh, on the note of this bed, guys, I need your help. I have so many things that I want to plant in this bed. I have, uh, I wanted originally to do a giant pollinator garden, but because the cats are so interested in this bed and they like to climb the trees and stuff, I, I don't think that's a good idea. So probably not gonna do a lot of pollinator plants. And I would actually kind of like to create a section kind of cat friendly um, and with plants that I love. Now, I don't think the elephant ear that I grew made it in any of my first vlogs. I don't think it's in there, but elephant ear is actually the first kind of tuber I ever learned to grow. I learned how to grow elephant ear in our apartment patio, on our apartment patio, because there was a lot of native elephant ear. It liked to live there. It thrived in the really poor soil. And one day I decided that I would try and transplant it. Before I knew anything about transplanting, I just thought, well, that plant is really beautiful. It's totally choked out there. What if I put it in some dirt? And I ended up getting parts of the tuber as well as the plant. And somehow, I didn't even know it was called a tuber, didn't know how to plant a tuber. I just thought, huh, this looks like it's part of the plant. I wonder if it will, if it will grow. And I ended up planting these little tubers in um, some potting mix as an experiment. And they grew and they took off. If I can find some pictures of our apartment at that time, I'll include them right here. Um, and so I just, I loved growing elephant ear and it was so magical like elephant ear is such a magical plant it's so large and beautiful and so soft um, really really lovely texture and it started to give that enchanted garden feeling and i was so so happy uh, so i love growing elephant ear and especially for this garden that i'm trying to kind of get that enchanted feeling going I would really love to plant some elephant ear. And as you guys know, when I was out in Arkansas with Jess, we went to that nursery and I fell in love with the black magic elephant ear. So cool. I I'd never seen black elephant ear before. As you know, Tommy likes black plants. And so I'm kind of thinking that we need to get some black elephant ear. <gasps> there was definitely just a spider on me. And I wonder if that's the one that bit me to pieces. Okay, gross. Ugh. But I've been doing some research on how much I could get elephant ear for. And people want like 20 bucks for tubers for elephant ear, which is kind of outrageous to me. So what I'm thinking I'll do is I might go gorilla gardening. We're actually gonna be up north this weekend for some family gatherings and <laughs> kind of thinking we might go liberate it, if you know what I mean. So we'll see if that ends up happening. Also, while we're here though, this hole in the ground. I have been fascinated with water gardens. Since visiting all the different arboretums and botanical gardens I've been to recently, I just, I've fallen in love with water lilies and I would love to have a water garden. Yeah, I would really love to do a water garden. It does feel a little intimidating though. It feels like a whole new realm. Some people online make it sound really easy. Others make it sound really hard. And I'm just like, I don't know. I have plenty going on with the garden right now. Do I really need to add one more thing to my plate? but also I really want a water garden and I think it would be really cool. Um, if I did one, I'd probably put one in the center back here, but I really wanna know what you guys think, like seven feet from the side to the back corner. I mean, on, on the larger side, we could do something as big as a kiddie pool. And you know, on the smaller side, we could do something as big as like a potted, like a terracotta pot. What I really don't wanna do is take up a bunch of space that could be used for planting because I've worked so hard to excavate it. I would hate to feel like it was in vain. So I don't know, here's the space. Will you guys help me figure out what size I should do if I do a water garden? And do you guys have any recommended resources for learning more about water gardens? Love your feedback on this. Help me decide, cause I can't figure it out. But as of right now, I'm thinking giant elephant ear, maybe some hostas, some hydrangea. <sighs> so many options so little money left in the budget for anything garden related <laughs> oh okay guys whatever you decide it has to be budget friendly okay okay also i took what you guys said into account i think i'm gonna leave this rusted piece i don't think it's gonna break down in a year or two years i think we have some time so yeah i'm really digging that rusted look as well and 
I don't, I'm not really ready to say goodbye to my arch trellis. I think we decided we're gonna leave that, uh, which means I think that it would be safe to plant some morning glory there. So I think we should go do that. Also, the dahlia and the salvia are totally temporary. They just needed a place to live because they were totally root bound and the garden wasn't ready for planting yet. So they're there. I think I might leave at least the salvia though because every day, every day the hummingbirds come to check out the salvia and uh, it's really fun to watch them. So I, I think I might leave it. The dahlias have got to get moved though. Those, are, those, those cannot stay there. Hello, my munchkins. Well, hey guys, I brought Matilda, my vlogging camera with me up north for the weekend, but we were so busy, I did not vlog at all. No gorilla gardening happened, just lots of chocolate dipped fruit making. I'll include some pictures of that here because I had so much fun living out my childhood dream of being a baker this weekend for my sister-in-law's baby shower. I just love making beautiful desserts. As a kid, I wanted to be a baker and I feel like I got to live out my childhood dream just a little bit this weekend. <laughs> I did really want a gorilla garden slash liberate some elephant ear, but I did not because I remembered that my mom actually has elephant ear that I gave her. So I think I'm going to acquire some from her also, my new friend Cindy, they have a YouTube channel. I will link it down below. They are running a ranch in Missouri, I think it is. And they are kind of doing what I want to do one day, which is essentially have a healing retreat center. And so I'm really glad to know her. She's actually from California, but she's living out there now with her husband and her kids. And it's so fun to see their journey unfolding on Instagram and on YouTube. So I'll link all their stuff down below. Please go check them out. I absolutely love what they're about. They're about helping veterans and I just love that. So please go check them out. Uh, really, really sweet family and a really awesome mission. She actually turned me on to some top secret, well, not so secret, some top secret elephant ear groups on Facebook. So I'm kind of excited to nerd out with some friends over elephant ear. So I'm pretty excited about that. And we might be exchanging some tubers for some tubers. So I love that this journey has brought so many cool, like-minded people into my life. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. I just want to say I'm so so grateful for each and every one of you. You guys make this journey so awesome. And I think of you guys when I'm out here based on the different things that you say and the feedback that you give and the encouragement that you provide. And I am so excited to share more of what we talked about in that last vlog with you guys. I'm so excited for what's next here at Hey, It's a Good Life. You guys are all about overcoming your fear and stepping into your dream. And that is my life passion. If I could do anything with my life, it would be that. I mean, it would be creating a healing homestead so that I can serve people, so that we can have these discussions. And so I'm getting really pumped to create this course for you guys. I think it's gonna have a lot of value. I'd love to include in it a coaching one-on-one -on -one with me and offer you guys my clinical services if you guys are interested in that. So I just wanna throw that out there. I'm getting really excited and I just really appreciate you guys. I love that we get to dream together and work hard towards those dreams and just root one another on. On the note of dreams and working hard and getting closer to dreams being fulfilled, I may have just finished filling our flower garden bed. As you guys know, we had to take out all of the horrible dirt and add the dirt that we purchased. It's looking really good. I'm feeling really hopeful. I'm feeling really hopeful that this is it for the dirt and that we have finished filling the bed. All that's left to do, and Gail, Gail, one of my favorite subs and commenters. Gail, this one is for you. Check out this root that I dug up. I am going to remove it because like you said, it could be problematic with its roots. So check this out. So now all that's left to do is remove that root, mulch, keep watering, and then we're going to plant. And we're actually gonna do that in the next vlog. So if that's something you're interested in, stay tuned. Thanks so much for being here and I'll see you in the next one. Oh,